Okay, so just to introduce today's class, we will be looking uh, briefly into time series analysis. We won't be looking at everything in time series analysis, but um, mainly just uh, what it is and uh, data exploration for time series analysis data. So maybe just uh, to engage you guys, do I have anyone who has worked with uh, time series data? Do we know what time series is? Just uh, a brief introduction from you guys. Anyone? Yes, Martin. Uh, all right, thank you for the opportunity. So time series data is uh, data that is uh, mo that is that is data that is monitored in a in 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 within some a period of time. And that particular data, what defines it as the like uh, the y, what defines it as the y axis is the time, and what defines it as the x axis is the particular variable you're measuring. So it's a variable measured with the time. Yeah. So it's measuring a variable according to the time. Okay. Thank you for that, Martin. Daisy, I had seen your hand up. You want to add something else? Oh yeah, just to build on what Martin has said, um, a time series is a sequence of observations taken sequentially in time. So then we'd go into time series analysis, which is basically trying to understand um, the causality, like to get to get an understanding as to why the data is varying as is over time. Okay, thank you for that, Daisy. So maybe just to ask before I start my presentation, can I get maybe an example of our time series data? Anyone from the team, an example of time series data, what we already know? Yes, Shaka, Kevin? Yeah, uh, I think one example of time series is like the stock change. Stock change data. Yes, yes, that is uh, one example. Do we have uh, any other example before I start? Yes, Rafa. Rafa, Rafa, yeah, go ahead. I, yes, yes, I, I was just uh, so I'll say the retail sales. Um, right. Yes, we have sales. Like, yes, we can hear you, Rafa. And also for casting for oh, the yeah. weather sometimes. Rafa, you are breaking, but I think I got right. I got that right. You also said the weather. So yeah, those are just a few examples of uh, time series data that we have. So I think I'll just start I'll just start uh, the class. So as I have said, we will be looking at uh, time series analysis uh, today. Just go over some of the big concepts that you need to know in time series analysis. So like uh, Martin and Daisy have said, a time series analysis, it's basically you're estimating a target variable, but uh, we are basing it on uh, on time. So like, uh, for example, like Rafa has said, and also Shaka, this data, uh, this data most of the time, not most of the times, for it to be considered a time series uh, data, there has to be the time concept added to the data, like uh, maybe it's a daily data, weekly data, monthly data, even yearly. Like for example, the data we have, um, we've been given uh, for this week, we have the sales data, the retail sales data, and uh, if you've just done uh, some small EDA, you'll notice that uh, this data has the timestamp or the date field. So that's what makes it a time series data and why we need to do a time series analysis. So 
the steps that we need to follow to do a time series analysis are like uh, what uh, is on your screen at the moment. You just collect the data, clean it, prepare some visualizations, observe if the data is stationary, then develop some charts, do some models, and um, and get some insights. So what we'll be concentrating on uh, from this class is uh, understanding the data. Maybe I want to do a lot of cleaning. We've done this from uh, week one. I'll leave that to you, but I will just uh, maybe just get the data, do some uh, visualization, check for stationarity, seasonality, and uh, other few things. So because we'll be mainly uh, focusing on understanding the data, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So let me just first go through the significance of time series. Why do we do time series? So for example, uh, what we are doing this week, we'll be doing a forecast for the next six weeks for this um, pharmaceutical company, Rossman. So what time series analysis uh, helps is uh, we can analyze historical data set. Like I think the data we've been given is almost two years. And from that data, we can focus, we can find patterns on the last two years and uh, focus uh, ahead. So something else that uh, time series helps us is to understand and match current situation with patterns derived from the previous stages. So for example, if we notice maybe our sales is quite down at the moment, maybe now from after doing a time series analysis, we can say maybe ah, we understand that because uh, depending on the patterns we've uh, seen before, this is the reason. And maybe we're expecting this kind of change in a certain type of period. So it just helps you understand what's going on. And finally, we have uh, we can also understand the factors influencing certain variables. Like for example, if you've just uh, gone roughly through this week, you might get to understand that uh, when it's Christmas, when we have these holidays, does it affect does it affect our sales? Okay, so uh, next we'll go through the components of time series analysis. Uh, the major things that uh, we need to consider while doing, uh, when looking at our time series data, we have trend, we have seasonality, we have cyclic behavior, and we have uh, irregularity. So before I define any of these words, do I have uh, anyone who maybe knows uh, any of this? just by brief before I go into detail of what we mean by trend, seasonality, cyclic, and irregularity. Can I get anyone? Yes, yes, Daisy, I see your hand is up. Which one, which word will you be defining and I'll just tell us what it means? Go ahead. Uh, thank you. I'll be defining seasonality. Um, it basically means uh, the periodic fluctuations in a series. So like you were giving the example about Christmas cells. So it's expected, most people have cells around Christmas. So it's almost expected for cells to go up around that period. Okay, thank you. Can I get a definition of another term? What about trend? We all know about trend from the common tongue. I'm only having Martin and Daisy interacting. Yes, Martin, just go ahead. Which one will you be defining? Uh, I'll, be defi I'll be defining trend. Uh, so uh, the trend is actually where you will have no fixed interval and any divergence within the given data set in a continuous timeline. That is, uh, whenever you have something that is trending, it's something that it will be either a high value or a low value. It doesn't have to be really defined according to maybe certain circumstances. Now, seasonality is the difference where it will be defined according to maybe certain periods of uh, time. There is certain patterns that form. And uh, with certain other periods of time, there are other patterns that form. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that, Martin. Can I have anyone uh, else? Yes, we have Ken. Ken.
Ken, Ken, you can go ahead. If Ken is talking, I don't think I can uh, hear him. Can anyone hear him? Okay, so sorry, Ken. I don't think uh, we have you clearly. Okay, so I'll just continue. So like uh, Martin, okay, Ken. So like Martin and uh, Daisy have said, again, we have this, uh, they've only defined two, but I will add uh, more. I will add cyclic and irregularity. So for trend, this one, they basically follow, you'd see, like for example, if you're doing a line graph, most of the time you can see maybe the line is clearly going upwards or it is clearly going downwards. So we'd have maybe an upward trend or a downward trend. On the other hand, in seasonality, you'd see some form of like um, a lot of bell curves. Maybe you have where it goes up at some point, then stays constant at some point. So there's definitely something affecting um, maybe the sales or the stock prices at uh, that specific thing. Like for example, uh, if it is um, maybe the holidays, that's what you can go about the seasonality. Cyclic, on the other hand, unlike seasons, you might notice that uh, cyclic and seasonality might somehow be almost the same, but it is not exactly the same because seasonality, it is affected uh, by something. It is affected maybe by something time specific, maybe like a holiday, um, something else time specific could be like if you are doing weather forecasts, maybe we usually have this like seasons, maybe during winter, but in cyclic, you'd find that um, these trends are not basically, they are not, they are not, uh, how, how what's the word, they are not affected by time based variables, but they are affected by something like, uh, we have like the economic status, maybe we have, there's usually a boom period and uh, you see this kind of pattern during a boom period. Maybe there's a depression period and you see this kind of pattern in a depression period in a... Yeah, and then we have irregularity where you cannot tell if there's anything causing the season, if there's anything, you can't, you can't really tell. It's just, there's no trend, there's no season affecting it, it's just irregular. So just go a little bit deep because I really want us to understand this because we'll be checking up our data is seasonal, what kind of trend that does it have? Just a summary of everything. In terms of time, you'd find that a trend, there's a fixed time. If you are looking on a daily basis, you'd find that uh, maybe looking at it daily after one month, there's a definite trend, same uh, definite, uh, definite trend, sorry. And uh, when you're looking at seasonality, the same thing. If it is Christmas, Christmas comes every year. If it is Easter, it comes every year. If we have maybe winter, winter comes every year. So there's also some sort of fixed time interval. But then for cyclic and irregularity components, like I've said cyclic since it's based on things like the economic behavior, we can't really tell when our economy is on a boom or a, on a on a day depression so you'd find that the time series the time interval for cyclic cannot be as definite as that of seasonality same thing to irregularity we've simply just said we can't really tell what's going on with irregularity so time will definitely not affect it as well so we also have uh, the durations there i want us to look at these visualizations i hope you can see uh oh wait I don't know, how can I make it? Uh, can you guys see the visualization? Are they too small? Anyone? Oh, I just can just assume you can see the small diagrams there. Okay, so you can see, for example, the trend. There is a specific trend. This is clearly an upward trend. So not all the times it will be linear. Sometimes you'd find that maybe there are curves, but even if with the curves you can see this still clearly, if I draw a, right, a line, it is still going maybe upwards or maybe going downwards. That's the kind of uh, graph we'd be expecting to see on a trend. In seasonality, you'd see like it uh, forms these small bell curves and maybe you can tell the reason as to why we have this hike maybe in price or um, 
sales maybe it's because of something and you can see that it is repeating so if this is yearly maybe you can tell maybe this is maybe this is june data if you find maybe you have maybe three years you might find that maybe this is june data and you're like okay maybe maybe all every time in june there's a maybe sales hike and then in cyclic it's almost the same as seasonality as i had said but it's not quite defined as uh, in seasonality because this is actually time based in cyclic it is uh, somehow continuous but somehow irregular at the same time if that makes sense and then definitely the irregularity uh, you, you wouldn't know what causes this high maybe it's just an outlier but in regularity you can't really tell why we have this kind of data so these are the example type of uh, graphs we will be seeing when we plot our data so something else you would notice if we have maybe a trend a specific trend uh, maybe seasonality it is easier to predict this kind of data but the cyclical ones and the irregularity ones they are kind of a little bit challenging to to predict okay so i'll go into the limitations limitations of time and uh, series analysis before i go deeper into a few terms okay mm. yes rafa do you have a question yeah so if i found in my uh my time uh, series analysis there i found that it's irregular Does that mean that i can just uh, predict what's happening what uh, what causes this and i mean it's like uh, how can just i get uh to understand such um, analysis i mean for the regular one so i think if you just pull if you just plot your data as it is you might see something like an irregular kind of uh, plot but uh, maybe if you just check your data you do some cleaning remove some null values maybe just doing data cleaning can actually get rid of some of this irregularity we are actually hoping that even for this week we won't be able to see this kind of visualization but if you see this kind of visualization just make sure that you are not just dealing with raw data make sure you actually explore your data remove missing values uh, remove outliers so that we don't see this kind of our visualization is that clear of him yeah yeah thank you Okay, so to look into a few limitations of the time series analysis, and these are things that we should also consider while doing the time series analysis. If we have any missing values, it might make uh, uh, the analysis a little bit harder, and that's why I've said you really have to clean your data before proceeding to do a time series analysis, like uh, removing the missing values or maybe imputing them something else you can say that the data points must be linear in their relationship like um we've said for example we have data for daily or uh, monthly we have to see that uh, maybe because of this day or uh, this specific month it uh, directly affects maybe our sales or uh, our uh, maybe our prices stock prices so for example if we have this variable like we cannot use a variable like id uh, most of the time you'll find that we'll be dropping this uh, this uh this field because uh, i don't think it has anything to do with that uh, no with date so if any time anywhere we have id that does not have any information uh, for our time series based analysis we'll just be dropping such kind of uh, variables so something else we have to do is data transformations and uh, so it might be expensive that's why it's a limitation because uh, you might find that our data is seasonal maybe our data is not uh, stationary and uh, for us to do any time series analysis maybe modeling we have to make our data stationary so we must do transformations in time series analysis and then finally we have uh, that they mostly work on uh, univariate data so this is like for example we really have one variable affecting like we have the time maybe affecting the sales maybe we have the seasons we'll be we find that we'll be plotting mostly 
with just one other additional uh, variable. Okay, so I want to us to focus a little bit more on the data types of time series because uh, before modeling, we will actually need to tell if our data is uh, stationary or non-stationary. And uh, basically what stationary data means is that uh, when it has no trend, it has no seasonality, it has no cyclic kind of behavior. So when we re actually remove all this, we remove the trend, we remove the seasonality, we expect that our data sets will have uh, like a constant mean throughout the data, like a constant variant. So if you do maybe like, for example, a trend and you see it's going upwards, definitely the mean of that kind of data is not the same. Like for example, up here, if we have this kind of data, the mean at this specific point might not be the same mean at this exact point. Yet for our data to be stationary, we want this graph to be kind of like a, somehow like a straight line. It doesn't have to be a straight line. We could just have it varying, but still show some sort of constant constant uh, mean. So for we must ensure in time series analysis that our data is uh, actually stationary. And we can do this by checking the mean of the data, the variance and the covariance. All these three statistical, um, statistical measures must be, must be, what can I say? Uh, what's the word? Must be constant here yeah, for the entire data. Then non-stationary data is basically data that is not stationary. So we'll just be checking uh, is our data stationary or not. So most of the time it will be non-stationary and we'll be working to make it stationary, then now we can do data modeling. So is that clear? I've seen a question. If uh, there's any additional question you can ask or I'll, or I'll read this question. Maybe have you understand the stationary and non-stationary data and if there's any question there. Okay, so Rafa, as you have raised your hand, I've also seen your question on um, on messages. Yes. Is it the same question you want to ask, or right, a different question? Yes, exactly. I understood that stationary is something that is like uh, it's not something that can be changed very easily, right? With some uh, property that should be just as it is, uh, so time won't really affect it. And um, yeah, so I thought for our data set, this would be like the store, for instance. It's something that won't be affected by time. Am I getting this right? No, not, not really. We don't want to look for those variables that are stationary. We want uh, this data that we are actually forecasting the sales. Before we feed it into our model, we want that data to be stationary. So most of the time after you plot it, you might find that maybe it has a, a specific trend. Maybe there's uh, some seasonal kind of behavior you can see in it. So if our data is not stationary, that specific cells that you are feeding into our model, we want now to transform that data to be stationary. So in our case, if you just plot it, what you're saying, like the sales, maybe it will be non-stationary. And then I will be working to make it stationary. Then now we can feed into our model. Is that clear, Rafa? Yes, uh, uh, they didn't get that right. Yeah, I will say that, uh, yeah, it is. Okay, thank you. So assuming there's no other question on the stationarity, I'll just uh, define a little bit more in terms of what I was saying in terms of the graphs. So for example, if you see on this non-stationary data that we have here, after plotting it, you can see that there's somehow like an upward trend. That's why I was saying our trend does not have to be a specific line. Just from the way that the data looks, we can tell that there is a trend here. 
and uh, when there's like an upward trend that we have here, this mean will definitely not be the same. The mean uh, from this point is not the same as mean for data here. So this is the examples of stationary data that we have, and we want our data to be stationary in a way that uh, if we look at the mean of the data, just uh, just by looking at the graphs, we can tell that this mean is somehow constant. It's actually flowing in a constant manner. Same thing with variance, same thing with the covariance. These three, we don't even have to uh, wonder a lot about it because we have the stats. We have the stats package library from Python. It's just easy to do that. Maybe if you want to understand deep, you can go ahead and do a little bit more statistics. Okay, so uh, since I've said we have to check if our data is stationary or not and actually make it stationary, there are a few methods of checking if our data is stationary. One of them is maybe manually calculating the mean, the variance, the covariance, and see if it is stationary. But uh, in Python, we have this statistical test called the ADF, Augmented Ziki Fuller Test. So this test, it just comes as a package, I think, in a stats model. And uh, it basically uh, follows these two assumptions, the null hypothesis that uh, the data you're feeding it is not stationary, and the alternate hypothesis that, this is, that the series is stationary. So yeah, what, uh, what the ADF test does is that it calculates for your p-values along with other values, but we'll be more interested in the p-value. If our p-value is greater than 0.05, then we agree that our data is non-stationary. But if the p-value is less than or uh, equal to 0 0.05, then we can say that our data is stationary. So what we are looking to get is a p-value of less than 0 0.05. So if we have anything greater than 0 0.05, means our data is not stationary. And now we have to do maybe some decomposition and get it to have a p-value of less than 0 0.05, which now will mean it is stationary. Is that clear? OK, so there are other methods. Most of the time, the ADF is used. So I won't actually go deeper into other methods. We have other methods like this KPSS. I don't think I know much about it. But uh, most of the time, you just find that the ADF, the ADF is used. So even in our, we will be using this today, the ADF. So when we find that our data is not stationary, we have to go ahead and make it stationary. So a few of the methods you can do to convert our non-stationary data into stationary. We can uh, do maybe the trending, which is now removing the trends from, um, from our data, and we can do differencing. So as you can just see from this specific data, if uh, even from the word detrending, just removing in the trend and making it to have like a stable mean, which is what we say the stationary kind of data should do. Then we have differencing, which I think it's the one that will uh, is mostly used and uh, is the what we will be using. And what this, uh, this kind of transformation does, it just uh, removes the dependence of your data on the time, then it stabilizes the mean over the time. So it's just simple, it's just getting the observation maybe for today and subtract, subtracting, sorry, subtracting it from the observation of yesterday. This is simple, but uh, it actually removes any kind of uh, maybe trend or season data we have, seasonality we have in our data. We look at it a little bit, um, practically uh, how differencing is done. So this is just an example of uh, when we have an unstationary data and what it looks after doing a uh, differencing and what it looks after doing a uh, detrending. So we can see that most of our data here, we had uh, like, for example, a mean that was not quite constant, but after doing both differencing and the trending, we have a mean. Uh, so I've seen a question, Shaka, Shaka, Kevin, 
and uh, stationary data will actually no, not stationary sorry now stationary data will misinform our model we actually want uh, when we are doing forecasting maybe for the next like we are doing this week for the next six weeks we want our our models to not be biased we want them to to actually learn and do a nice forecast so that's why we have to to make our data stationary this is just basically for the modeling purposes Is that clear, Kevin? I have to follow up on that question. Can you hear me? Mm, okay. So by by removing yes yes I can hear yeah by trying to remove non-stationarity in data, could not that affect the real information of the data? Uh, it will, uh, because we are trying to do, our main objective is to do a forecast. It will not, it might affect the authentication, the authenticity of our data, but uh, at this point, what we are doing is uh, we are transforming this raw data into something meaningful, something that can help us do a forecast. And when we have it as non-stationary, it uh, will affect our focus, our forecasting uh, power, forecasting capability. So even if we'll be affecting our data, well, there is no way we are actually changing. Um, and you'll notice not that we are changing it, maybe specifically maybe a price from, uh, I don't know, 50 to 45. It's basically like doing what we, when we do maybe normalization or scaling, and we have our values in a specific range so that our model can actually just better understand it and do a better model. Is that, is that clear, Kevin? Okay. Then Daisy. Um, maybe mm -hmm. to build on Kevin's question, are these data points being remembered somewhere or by differencing and descending, are we discarding them entirely? Sorry, what's, what's the last part of your question, are we? Are we discarding the data set entirely or like are the data points being noted somewhere? No, I don't think they are being, not I don't think, they are not being discarded. It's just more of like a, a decomposition kind of kind of transformation. Like uh, what I was saying, uh, we've already gone through maybe normalization and scaling and um, we just get, we just make our data into a way that our model can better understand it and do a better kind of prediction. So the same way with differencing and the trending. We are just kind of decomposing our data into a myth, into a way that our model can understand it. So it's not definitely it's not the exact data we'll be having um, when you compare with our raw data. But after doing some detrending, we'll have now data that is better for our model. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through. Uh, that's it from the presentation. I'll just quickly go through an example of time series analysis. So the example I'll be using is uh, on uh, stock, stock data. So maybe you won't be doing the exact same thing, but I just want us to see what is, um, what is our goal? What are we trying to do by the end of the, so that we actually do the modeling, what are we trying to do? So I hope you can still see my screen. I hope you can still see my screen. So just, uh, okay, so just like uh, any edda done, you just start simply, you import the libraries, you read uh, your data, you perform, maybe just understand the data. What kind of unique data do we have? What kind of uh, information are we dealing with? We have maybe this kind of, this kind of field. So just basically a normal data exploration, the stocks.info. Yes, Daisy? Uh, yes, Daisy? Me, Anastasia, this is a question that you zoom in your screen. I'm guessing he has a challenge with his site. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Is that better? 
I think I've zoomed in. Jiza, 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 Yang, is that better? Ah, okay, nice. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, what we just basically do, like any other data set, is just basically understand it. What kind of data are we dealing with? What, how many fields do we have? So yeah, that's basically what's going on here. We're just doing a lot more of uh, head. So what's, what I was doing here, this is, I don't think this will be, you might actually need to do this. I am not sure, because I think the data is coming as strain different, store different. We also have the tests that are different. So maybe to just append the store data to the, um, to the other data, you might need to do a merge, which is what I was also doing here because I was just merging the sales, the prices data to the stock data so that I know which stock exactly we are, uh, we are following. So I think you also need to do the same for the six data. I think we have the store data um, separate. So this also I've done here, I've just done a merge and um, yeah, just continue dropping what is not needed. You might notice like uh, we, the ID, like what I was saying, we don't need the ID, you can just uh, drop that. So this is just basic EDA. EDA, I don't think there's so much I can say here. So I want to go to where we have time series specific kind of approach. Good. Now, after we have the data, uh, one of the things uh, that we do, like if you remember from uh, my presentation, is now start doing visualizations. And uh, you can do a basic line plot. You can do a basic bar plot. So what do you notice? Do you think uh, there's a trend? Do you think uh, there's seasons? Like uh, some of the things you'll notice when checking for seasonality, uh, sometimes it's... Uh, you cannot miss it. Sometimes it's just so open. Maybe you see it's clearly Christmas that is affecting this data. So when you just do basically the visualizations, you might notice maybe there's, um, in this data, I see this maybe a trend. So in the data I have now, there's not so much of that. Let me see. I think there was another visualization I had down here. It's, yes, Martin. Yes, Martin. Uh, just on the first visualization, uh, mm -hmm. you had. Uh, I was requesting whether you could push, you could pull it to the right so that you could see the y-axis. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was just yeah, doing the price against the date. So in our case, that would be something like, I think the sales, that would be the sales, yeah. The sales against the the date. So you notice when, uh, when I did this kind of uh, the first the first visualization, you cannot see much from the data. And this is basically because the data used here is actually really huge. I think this is, um, data from, uh, it's, it was actually going through a long time. We have from 2020 to, I don't know where is the first data. Okay, the point, point is that we, this data is quite a lot and that's why we cannot see a lot of uh, what you want to see. Is there a trend, is there seasonality? So in my case, what I did, I narrowed it down to something specific and uh, what goes on from here is, um, <clears throat> I'm looking maybe at a specific stock. You might find that you want to understand uh, maybe a specific month. You might want to understand a specific, uh, in your case, uh, I don't know what fields you have, but maybe you might find your data is also distributed in terms of stores. So you might want to understand maybe this specific store. So like in this case, I've narrowed it down to understand uh, a specific column. And after doing now, um, this is what is just happening here, actually choosing a specific stock and I want to understand uh, this specific stock. So when I went to draw now this one specific stock, then you can see this, some kind of trend starts to show up. And uh, even if it's not clear, we can see that there's uh, some sort of um, an upward trend. If we try to look at maybe the seasonality, 
there is not much of a seasonality going on here. You can't really tell if there's a certain season that uh, repeats itself, which is what seasonality was saying. So from just looking at the data, we can't tell if it is, if it is um, seasonal. But uh, something else we can tell, I think it's uh, just from looking, you can tell that this data is not stationary. But you can go ahead and maybe understand the data a little bit more. And uh, I think what I was doing next year was, um, no, this one is still understanding the same kind of, you can see we still have the same kind of uh, a pro or the same kind of graph so this is still just basically understanding it what i wanted oh okay so here again i went to understand what i've said in your case you might do maybe the stores so here we did just another stock and this other stock you can see it has a different kind of trend you might see this one is uh, somehow really constant and uh, we can see it over the months we have these colors distributing the months and even if we have some irregularity of data, um, I don't think there's anything repeating as much. You notice that uh, maybe the kind of seasonal uh, stock data might not be as seasonal as sales data, because stock stock is just influenced a lot by economic status, not mainly by time status. So seasonality might be hard to consider here, but we can see now maybe the trend, which is somehow constant, and uh, maybe. Um, we can see here we have like a constant mean. So this is uh, maybe another thing to also look at really nicely. So you can uh, go down ahead. Here I was focusing again on a specific month. See, is there maybe another kind of trend that shows up in a month? So this is basically under. For April, what kind of data do we have for April? Let's copy paste the code. April data. No, I've actually stopped talking, guys. I'm saying because uh, I just wanted us to understand that maybe for this month, not not this month, for a month like April, because we are going point. What we are trying to do today is uh, really understand the data. Oh. Okay, so I lost connection to Collab, but I think it's back now. Okay, guys, so I hope you can still hear me. There seems to be some sort of delay with my collab. Can you guys still hear me? Am I still connected? Oh, it's connecting. Ah, okay. Even we have the data, it's, it's it's a great. So we narrowed down our data to maybe again a month, and we can still see the same kind of trend. It's not uh, quite clear that it's an upward trend, but you can see some sort of trend showing up. So that is basically just understanding yeah. data. So something else I said. When we are trying to understand, for example, seasonality, we can just look at the plots we do. But uh, something else you can do deeper in um, time series analysis is do the autocorrelation and correlation plots, as well as we have yeah the autocorrelation and the partial autocorrelation plots. These plots will help you see a seasonality that you cannot see in the data. Like, for example, here we can't really tell if there is anything seasonal. But uh, if you go deeper into looking maybe at the autocorrelation and correlation plots, maybe we can uh, notice there's some seasonality going on. So oh, when we plot, we can do seasonality in two different ways. We have pandas. They have this plotting um, 
for autocorrelation plots. Pandas have this capability. And we also have, I think, in stats model. Yeah, we also have in stat model, we have this plot, plot autocorrelation functions and plot partial autocorrelation functions. So we'll just look into that as well. So we can just start by using the pandas one. And uh, when you do this kind of um, plot, you notice that the values are going both to the positive sides and the negative. So there's definitely some sort of trend. There's definitely some sort of seasonality going on because the kind of data we expect, we expect it to range along the zero, zero. We don't expect it to go higher or lower. So when we do it uh, using the stats model uh, package, you can also see the same kind the same kind of plot is being generated. Our values are also high towards the positive side and also we have some values towards the negative side. So uh, what I'm seeing here mainly is uh, a trend. A trend is what is mainly showing off from these uh, plots. Uh, you notice, uh, I don't have an example, but um, I think I was doing some, uh, yeah. I was doing some uh, research and uh, the different kind of plots you might expect from uh, the ACF and the PSCF. Let me just uh, uh, quickly go through a few. Yeah, you'd notice that uh, you might find this kind of ACF graphs showing. And uh, most of the time, if I find these lags, we have some on the top, we have some on the bottom. And here, we definitely have some trend, some seasonality going on. You can see this kind of shape forming or forming here. So when, we, when you get any kind of data that looks like this, there's definitely some trend and seasonality component in your data. But if your data is somehow close to to uh can i say from this section this is now your data is a little bit more more like it's not being affected by the trend and the seasonality component so what i wanted to mention is sometime you might find an acf graph that looks something like this and um and you might find a graph that looks something like this so while this is trying to go down, you can see there's somehow like a lower trend. You may you also see that there's also some form of oscillations going on here. And when you get such kind of an ACF, you might uh, immediately conclude that our data has both trend and seasonality affecting it when you get such kind of an ACF. Anyway, so to continue, I just wanted to mention that because we are, will now be trying to lower these lags all the way to down here so that we can now say we've removed these two components, trend and uh, seasonality. Uh, okay, so let's just continue with our stock data. And uh, as you can see, so I just wanted us to see before removing trend, what kind of data we had. We've already seen this kind of trend now just to show the autocorrelation, this is again going deeper to show for the April. This is a little bit more repetition, just to understand the data a little bit more. But I just wanted us to see a graph before removing the trend and after removing the trend, how they look. So we have that one before the trend and um, after trend, after removing the trend, you see that our values go down completely. For example, this is uh, this we've used the data here for April, so it's let me go to actually show you the April data. Like for example, here we can see the ACF for April, and our data is we just have this ACF plot really high. We there's there's no form of some um, a seasonality in April, but we can see there's some form of trend. The blue region. <laughs> Okay, Kevin, I don't think I know. This just comes up with the plot, the stats model, unless there's someone who can explain yeah. what this region means. Because every time I do an ACF, this comes. I'm not quite sure what this is. Do we have anyone who know what this blue region is? Is it, I, oh wait, is it where we expect our data to be? I'm not quite sure, Kevin. I don't want to tell you the wrong information. If we have anyone... Um, Level of significance. 
I'm not sure about this level. I I'm thinking it's maybe where we want our plots, our lags to range, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't want to say anything that is uh, misleading. Maybe I confirm that with you. And Amal, you're asking how do we read the plot? So what we expect to see for our uh, autocorrelation and our uh, PSCF is we want to see all these data points, we want to see them down here near the x-axis. So anytime we have these lines protruding either to the positive side or the negative side, it means your data has been affected by trend or seasonality component. So in such a case, we can just say that our data, this is specifically for April, it's just going down. It is no form of uh, maybe some bell curves showing. So we can see maybe our data here is being affected by trend only. But like I had said, if it's maybe both trend and seasonality, we find that our data, in addition to maybe going on a downward trend, it might also be showing some form of curves like I had shown in uh, which example, in this example, Amal. So that's how you read. As long as your data is not nowhere near the x-axis, your data is definitely being affected by some trend in seasonality components. And uh, that's where now we remove the seasonality. We can remove it by, again, the differencing and the detrending ones, like we have said. So after removing the trend, and I noticed what I said by the first thing we are doing about the trend is uh, we have this differencing method where you just subtract from the previous observation. It's quite simple, but it, it gets the job done. And you can see that our data now, we have it down to the x-axis. This is the kind of this is the kind of plots we are looking to get. Then now we can say we've removed that component. Zero correlation. Yeah, I think that's what we are looking for, Mal. That is exactly what we are looking for. Okay, so uh, same thing. After we do, we, we remove the trends. You can also see that our data is now quite constant. Yes, we have some points that go up and down, but when you look at the data in general, we have some some constant type of activity going on there, which is better than what we had at the beginning of our data going. It, this was just not not nice. We don't want our data to look like this. We want it to look a little bit more like this. Okay, so this is basically what's going on for the next few graphs because I've uh, like I've told you guys I've done that for uh, to understand the data more so I've done that a couple of times we also have the partial uh, autocorrelation um, plots and we'll be looking at the same things we don't want our data to be shifting to the positive side or the negative sides we want them to be near the x-axis the 0, 0.00 so the same way we will be removing the trends. So I think we are using the same differencing technique. Uh, let me just confirm. Yeah, I think we're actually using the same differencing technique. This is the what I had already done, a differencing technique up there. So and you'd notice be, before the trends, we have these two points for the partial autocorrelation um, plots, we have these two points uh, on the positive side, but after doing the differencing and removing the trends, all the data comes down here, which is what we are looking for. Okay, so finally, that's just a correlation plot. Yeah, I know you've done correlation matrix before. Bef because I see time is running, I also want us to check uh, for the stationarity, which is another big important thing. Um, for our data and uh, we can check uh, stationarity we said maybe by just doing looking at the mean or doing the adf augmented decay fuller test <coughs> so basically what i've done here we've uh, i've just do i've done simple histograms to understand the data look at uh, does it look stationary and then uh, I've also done what I was telling you, you can calculate the mean and see does this mean uh, compare to this mean. Basically, you can see it's different and uh, we can see that our data is non-stationary. But uh, what we want to, I want you to 
adapt is using the ADF, the Augmented Decay Fuller Test, and it's just um, a package from the STATS model library. And uh, what you just do is you give it the values, maybe like for example of your sales, and then now you just plot out. You do the, uh, sorry, you do the AD Fuller Test on your data, and then you just plot the values. So this is the kind of values we expect from an ADF. And what we are mainly interested in, as I said, is the p-value. The, the p-value we have at the moment here when we are just doing, um, the, the, this is now the price direct for the stocks. In your case, it will be the store's sales. You see that the value is 0 0.85. And uh, this is just, this is way above 0 0.05. And uh, just from that p-value, we can tell that our data is not stationary. We would like to reduce this value to less than 0 0.05, preferably zero, but just want to reduce it to uh, 0 0.05, less than 0 0.05 or equal to 0 0.05. So again, the same way of uh, removing trends, like I had said, differencing, still the same data we used uh, to remove seasonality, the differencing te technique where we just subtract the observation by one day behind, it's the same data we are using here, which has already undergone differencing. And then, then again, we do an uh, AD fuller test and we notice that our p-value goes down to 0, 0.00. This I, I can say maybe is the best kind of scenario, but if it just gets slower than 0 0.05, then you can just proceed and assume that your data is now stationary. Yeah, so I also did the mean again to just confirm that our data is just ranging around the zero and somehow constant and uh, just uh, to confirm. So I think that's what we'll be stopping from. From there now, when you have a data stationary, it, it does not have any... Uh, seasonality or trend component, now you can go ahead and do some modeling. You might find there are models like I think we might be exploring profits for or forecasting this this week, but there are also other models like we have the Sarima models, Arima models. There are so many models used in time series analysis, but uh, after you've now get your data to this specific uh, point, now you can go ahead and do modeling. Any question up to there? Yes, Martin. All right, uh, thank you for the lesson. It's been very good. Uh, I wanted to ask concerning the package for, th that package that uh, Yababel mentioned called Profit. Uh, is it at this point where we start using the Profit for the plots and checking out the time series stuff or it's just for the predictions uh, majorly? Then the second question was, uh, I was trying to look for this particular notebook, but uh, I have not seen it uh, in week three uh, resources. So I don't know where it could be. Okay, I'll, this particular notebook has not yet been added. I, I'll add it. I'll add it, I'm sorry about that guys. About the profit um, library. I know that it is mainly used for forecasting. I'm not sure if it also has the pre-processing power. Maybe Desmond, because I know Desmond will be handling that. Maybe he can just give you, um, it can, maybe he can, he'll be taking you through that tomorrow. The, uh, so maybe if he's here, he can just answer that quickly. I know it's used mainly for forecasting, but I'm not sure if it has the edda. Desmond, could you answer that? Um. I didn't get the question very well. I just jumped in. I was kicked out a little bit. Can you repeat the question, please? Okay, so I think Martin is asking about the profit library. Um, is it just used for forecasting or uh, can they use the profit mainly to also do, to understand the data like for EDA? Is that the question, Martin? I think that's how I understood it. Yeah, yeah, that's the question. Uh, okay, I think the profit is mostly is used for for forecasting, so it's not mostly used for uh, the exploratory analysis. Okay, is that clear now, Martin? Okay. 
Okay, any other question? Any other question before we call it uh, a wrap? Um, I saw something about profit allowing you to add holidays. So like, you know, that I said, you could decide, go and pick uh, that it's Christmas break from December 25th to January 1st. So I wanted to inquire if that also goes into the EDA or, is, or whether that is necessary then. At this moment, do you have a response to that? I don't think I'm too familiar with profit. I don't want to mislead you guys. It's, it's, it's not like an, an um, it's not like an EDA as such, but it, it, it tries to tell you that in the future there's going to be a holiday. So it tries to give you a prediction of if, if there's going to be a holiday, then uh, mostly we expect that uh, uh, a certain amount of sales will be made uh, during um, holidays, especially maybe if there's a Christmas, we expect maybe the uh, the sales to rise. So it's it's not an exploratory as such, but it's a, a predictive something that is coming up in in the future. I don't know if that makes sense, Daisy. Yeah, I guess it does. Okay. okay so any other question, or uh, we can close uh, there. Oh, and I've just uh, remembered I didn't mention the something about logging. I haven't, uh, I haven't incorporated in this uh, notebook specifically, but uh, I think it's just as simple as importing the logging, the logging function. The logging. Also, so I think Martin has shared um, has shared uh, material on that. So I just wanted to, because I know it will be marked, just make sure that you actually do logging for your work. I'm not quite sure of the processes, but I think it's as simple as importing. Is it log? I don't know from where. This should definitely give you an error. Oh, yeah. And then there's a statement. I think it's logging dot. Yeah. Don't forget to do logging. <laughs> I know I've not uh, done it here, but uh, it's not... If you look at it and the materials shared also by Martin, it's not quite difficult to do logging, yet it has marks. So don't forget to include uh, logging. Something else is just outside. And uh, I noticed when I'm marking most of your work, sometimes you have maybe like an output. You have like an output that is too too huge. You'll be outputting data, and the data is uh, very long. So when uh, when you are, I'm going through your notebook, it's quite difficult to just navigate through all that data 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 area. So if you're using maybe the Jupyter notebook, after you finish and you have an output and it's too much, you can just double click and make that section smaller. You don't have to show the entire. You can now, that now will give you the capability of scrolling through your output instead of just uh, using so much space showing all of your output. So uh, with that, I think we can end um, our class. If there's no more questions, maybe I can give uh, another 10 seconds if there's anyone with a question. Then we can end the meeting, the class there. Samuel, you're not clear on logging. I've said uh, I did not incorporate it in this uh, notebook. I'm so sorry for that. I think I must have forgotten. But uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, hard to do logging for your work. It's just as simple as the importing logging, and then only a few code uh, codes to do the logging uh, itself. Like Martin has has said in the chat, you just do logging.warning, logging.debug, and uh, logging.error. I also know that he shared material on uh, Slack, and you can just go through it, because uh, logging, it's not hard. It's not hard to add to your work, and yet it is uh, it actually has points. So, Samuel, I'm quite sorry that I cannot show you exactly how it works. But um, material, the material is there.
Is that okay, Simon? Samuel, Samuel, yes? Okay. So any other question? Okay, so we can end uh, at that. I wish you all the best in uh, analyzing this week's data. Just have fun with the time series. If you want to understand it a little bit more, do more research because it has a lot of statistics involved in it, but that should not scare you if it is an, a field you're more much interested in. Okay, so thank you guys for attending the class and um, see you tomorrow.